Okay. And I think we're ready to go. We're going to start here with uh, some brief comments by the Ramsey County Attorney, John Choi, and then we will entertain some questions uh, directly after that. So let's have uh, the County Attorney join us up front. Good morning. Thank you for being here today for what I would describe as a solemn moment for our community. This is because the Archdiocese of St. Paul in Minneapolis has made an admission of wrongdoing as it relates to the sexual abuse suffered by three children in our community. When we commenced concurrent criminal and civil action against the Archdiocese in June of 2015, the very first goal that we laid out in bringing forth such charges was to hold the Archdiocese accountable for its role in the abuse of our three victims. From the very beginning, it has been our position that the Archdiocese must directly admit fault and wrongdoing in its role in failing to protect the victims of former priest Curtis Waymire. Without such an admission by the Archdiocese or a determination by a court, there could never be true accountability. It was not only Curtis Waymire who harmed children, it was the Archdiocese as well. Today, through the leadership of the new permanent Archbishop Bernard Hebda, that direct and public admission of wrongdoing has now been made. As we outlined then, the civil settlement provisions were far-reaching, unprecedented, and far greater than anything that could have been achieved through any probationary sentence imposed by the criminal court because of constitutional limitations. The one thing lacking in that landmark settlement agreement was the archdiocese admitting that they did anything wrong. Because that admission of wrongdoing was not given, this office continued to seek accountability through the criminal charges. Today, that missing piece has been provided by the Archdiocese. The record in the civil case will now reflect the following, and I quote, Curtis Waymar was a priest in this Archdiocese. The Archdiocese admits that it failed to adequately respond and prevent the sexual abuse of victim one, victim two, and victim three. The Archdiocese failed to keep the safety and well-being of these, these three children ahead of protecting the interests of Curtis Waymire and the Archdiocese. The actions and omissions of the Archdiocese failed to prevent the abuse that resulted in the need for protection and services for these three children, end quote. In light of this admission of wrongdoing and the additional requirements that are now a part of the amended civil settlement agreement, I have chosen to dismiss the pending criminal case against the Archdiocese. Because the criminal case is now closed, we will release this afternoon legal documents that have been exchanged between the parties in this case. With this amended settlement agreement, all of the goals we first articulated when we brought forth our legal actions have now been realized. We have achieved an admission of wrongdoing. 
We have put additional legal safeguards in place to ensure the Archdiocese does not repeat its failures. In addition, we have increased the oversight of our office and the court, which will now continue until February of 2020. I want to assure you if the Archdiocese fails to uphold the terms of the civil settlement, we will take further legal action. As a part of our amended civil settlement agreement, the Archdiocese will be subject to the following new conditions. Extending the external audit period for an additional year, designating a seat on the Ministerial Review Board to be appointed by the Ramsey County Attorney, in which I am pleased to announce uh, that we, that spot will be filled by National Child uh, Advocate Patty Wetterling. Providing for the Archb Archbishop Hebda's direct participation in three restorative justice sessions as convened and determined by this office. Strengthening the role of the Director of Safe Environment so that it will endure long beyond the completion of this settlement agreement and committing to ensure ongoing counseling resources for our three victims and their immediate family if necessary. I recently had the opportunity to visit with this family that has been so wrongfully harmed and they wholeheartedly support these actions. When the language of the civil admission was read aloud to them, they were moved and satisfied that justice had been done. They are a strong and united family, and we as a community should continue to include them in our thoughts and prayers. I said it on December 18th, and I will say it again. It is my expectation that never again will the facts of this case be repeated and that the protection of children will forever be of paramount importance within this archdiocese. I want to publicly thank Archbishop Hebda for his leadership and his heartfelt statement today. Since his arrival in our community and installation as Archbishop, I have come to know him and his commitment to providing the necessary leadership to ensure that the protection of children is a top priority of this archdiocese and that lay members, volunteers, and employees such as Tim O'Malley will have significant involvement in how the archdiocese deals with priests who are suspected of abusing children. Finally, it is important to recognize that it is the people of the archdiocese, the laity, and the clerics who made our legal action possible by coming forward and telling the truth. Again, I want to thank them for their courage. I also wish to express my heartfelt appreciation to the St. Paul Police Department who worked diligently on this case and of course my staff in the Ramsey County Attorney's Office uh, who worked uh, so hard on this case as well and whose work will continue as they monitor the terms of the settlement agreement. Without their hard work and the honesty of the people involved in these incidents, we would not have achieved justice in this case. Thank you very much. So when I call on you, I just you state your name, organization, and your question. Want to start? Yeah, uh, Bill Hudson, WCCO. Uh, I know. John, uh, first of all, I uh, want to ask you, you referenced the uh, release of documents this afternoon in regards to the criminal matter, which is being dismissed. Is there any indication in uh, any of those documents of a knowledge uh, of the handling of this uh, Woodmire case beyond the local archdiocese? Church hierarchy, perhaps even upwards toward, uh, pointing towards the Vatican? 
Well, um, this afternoon, uh, and we're still in the process of doing some redactions and preparing all of the information that we are going to be releasing today so that it's available this afternoon. Um, it's certainly going to be probably after 2 o'clock, but we'll try to do it as quickly as possible. Um, I don't really want to go into um, all of those documents because I think today really is about the admission of wrongdoing and the conclusion of this case. The conclusion of this case, the criminal case, is what makes possible um, the release of this information. And I felt that it was important for the public uh, to have this information. But I, I think I'll let the documents uh, speak for themselves. Um, there'll be a, a lot of uh, things that uh, people can look through. Uh, but I think this is a, an important um, uh, thing that the, the, you know, the, the public should have. Yeah, so let me talk about the restorative justice. So that concept was first introduced as a part of the settlement agreement back in December. And uh, if any of you would know me, I've been a very strong proponent of restorative justice uh, efforts um, to achieve complete um, justice in, in situations where maybe a, a legal action cannot. And so in that context, uh, some of those provisions were in the December agreement, uh, but in order to fully have restorative justice, I think the key is to make sure that people want to be truly there and they're free. They're free to speak. And I think one of the things, and I think uh, Archbishop Hepta talked a little bit about this, um, the, the criminal case and what that was doing to the restorative justice, they were kind of in conflict. And so we're still in the process of uh, trying to figure out exactly how best to do these restorative justice, justice sessions. Um, and I'm really glad that Archbishop Hebda uh, is also a strong proponent of being involved, and he personally will be involved. And so the, the, the agreement calls for him to ha participate in at least three sessions. Uh, but I think uh, that's an ongoing discussion, but I think it's really important that he's a part of it, and I know that he truly in his heart wants to be there. And um, I have some thoughts about how we could do this, but I, I'm not wanting to share that right now at this time. Yes. Um, what is it that the archdiocese did above and beyond that the court would not have been able to mandate and you would not have been able to get that relief through the court? What specifically are they doing? Well, it starts with the premise of just court oversight. Um, we have in our constitution the separation of church and state. And so as a part of the child protection statutes that we utilized, it allowed for the court uh, to have certain oversight, right? And so by way of agreement, uh, we are able to create a, a framework in which the court and this office will be overseeing certain aspects of the systemic reform that is required of them as a part of the December 18th settlement agreement and now today the amended agreement. There are a whole list of things that are being required and they will be subject to uh, annual audits, and what the audit does is that they will look at every promise that was made in the settlement arrangement, and then uh, determine whether or not they've actually done what they said they were going to do. So as an example, uh, we have provisions in there that they have to start looking at fingerprinting their employees and clerics. Um, I have never heard of a term or condition of probation ever in my life in which the criminal court would require an employer um, to look at that particular issue and make certain progresses and follow up on the steps um, that they promise. There's other things that are in uh, re relating to how the ministerial review board, which is a, a, a church a committee, as to the reforms that would be made as to how they would operate. I don't ever recall ever in my life uh, seeing as a condition of probation a court ordering a church how they should run their affairs. 
Now, I want to make it clear that in this particular context, this is all possible because the archdiocese has agreed to do these things. They have agreed to go beyond really what they could have been required to do. And so they should be, being, be given credit for doing that. And it's also, I believe, a show of their good faith uh, in terms of moving forward. Can we follow up? Uh, is there any other archdiocese in this country that is doing what St. Paul is doing and that has had the agreement that you have had with them? Is there anybody? I really believe that what uh, the archdiocese in St. Paul in Minneapolis is doing now and will be doing over the course of the next three to four years uh, is really unprecedented. And so it should be, I hope, a model for child protection protocols and how they would uh, work uh, al along these lines and work with a, a governmental agency um, that has not been seen before. You're talking about the victim's family? Yes. So by law, you know, the county attorney's office is required to give notice and uh, have a, uh, give them notification about all of the various things that are happening in this case that are of significance. Um, so as a part of that, um, we've been explaining to them everything that's been going on with respect to this case. And then also, too, I should um, credit my uh, victim Witness uh, Advocacy uh, Unit, um, our advocate who developed a relationship with the family, and so and just to help provide supportive services and also to answer whatever questions uh, that they had about this particular process. I can just tell you uh, that they wholeheartedly um, supported this um, moment and how this case is being resolved it was exactly uh, what they wanted. And when the admission that is now a part of the civil record was read aloud, uh, it had a profound effect and I hope a healing effect too for them. Yeah, well, we've thoroughly investigated, um, I think, just about everything. And I think you'll see a lot of the things that we'll be releasing and, and subsequently as well. Um, but you uh, said clearly, the word clearly, and I think the, the key issue here is that, you know, for us to bring criminal charges against anyone, whether it's a corporation or whether it's an individual, uh, we have to believe that there is sufficient evidence to actually prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. You said the word clearly, which presupposes that the facts were clear. Um, I think that in the context of all the facts that we uh, have gathered, to say that one particular individual was responsible for contributing to the harm done to these three children, um, that would be a harder thing uh, to prove in court. And from an ethical standpoint, we don't bring ethical charges against, or we don't bring charges against, criminal charges against people if we don't believe uh, that we could prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. So there just wasn't sufficient evidence uh, to point to one particular person, but there certainly was with respect to the entire corporation because Nobody can say as a defense that it was somebody else's responsibility or that they weren't aware because the knowledge would be imputed on the entire corporation. So the bits and pieces of information or knowledge that a particular individual within that hierarchy may have had all can be kind of aggregated and imputed to the entire corporation. That's the reason why we brought the criminal charges and the civil action in tandem 
against uh, the archdiocese as a corporation. And also, too, we did it strategically. I mean, we did it together for one particular reason, because we wanted to have an outcome that was good, good for the public, and to ensure that justice was done for the victim, and to ensure that accountability uh, was uh, achieved. And so there's, there's really, I mean, we've achieved everything, the three goals that I laid out on June 5th. You can go back to the record and read that, but we've accomplished those things. And so really there's uh, nothing further that really needs to be done in terms of what we laid out as our goals. Well, John, why, why was it so important to get uh, someone of, uh, someone like Patty Wetterling Well, I'm a big fan of Patty Wetterlings, and uh, I think that uh, her whole life uh, has been devoted uh, to the issue of protection of children and prevention. And um, I think that she has so much credibility around this issue. Uh, it should give our community uh, some uh, comfort that she's there. And I know that uh, Patty would never ever compromise her own credibility and the work that she's been doing uh, for her most of her uh, life. And so um, I think that um, she's just a, a great person to be part of um, the systemic change and reform that's happening within the Archdiocese. And I know that she's going to help that organization uh, do it better. We've got questions about two more questions. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about, um, in the report that we received from the Archdiocese today, they referenced three recent cases where there were reports, alleged reports of sexual misconduct and, and how those were being handled. Can you tell us a little bit about the status of, of those three instances, instances and how they're being handled under this new agreement? Yeah. So, first of all, I want to make it clear that those three instances did not involve, in terms of an investigative agency, within Ramsey County, right? So I'm not aware of the underlying uh, work that the police uh, investigators or others would have done. But I am very aware of how the archdiocese would handle these situations, because they would call us and tell us ab about what is happening. And we certainly were verifying that they were following what they promised to do. And the most important thing is, whenever there is an allegation of any sexual abuse, the first thing that's going to happen is that the Archdiocese is going to call the police. And so that occurred, and then of course they will be deferential to the police, to the investigative agency. They will do whatever the police ask them to do. There could be a situation in which the police says, don't make this public, we don't want you to because we are doing an investigation right now and we don't want to tip off the suspect or whoever it might be. And so they're being deferential to the police, which is really, really critical. And then after the matter is resolved uh, in terms of the investigation or whatever it might be, let's say, for instance, as an example, and I'm not talking about these particular three, but let's say that the police investigate and then they submit a case to a county attorney for potential criminal charges against somebody who's been suspected of child abuse, right? and that county attorney declines to prosecute because there is insufficient evidence. No longer will the archdiocese view that decision to decline prosecution for insufficient evidence as an exoneration. They will follow up and they will do their own investigation through the Ministerial Review Board, which is a group comprised of a lot of laypersons who have great credibility, one of which will be Patty Wetterling and they will determine whether or not that cleric is fit for continued ministry and they will look into those allegations. So that's kind of the change in terms of what is now required as a part of the December agreement and uh, some of the, the, the amendment today. And so that's, uh, that's really, really important. And so that's, uh, that's a good question. Thank you. Last question. Mr. Price, I understand that your criminal case was against Do you have to have victims in order to bring a criminal case? Is that true? Would you have to have victims? And would those victims 
have the same parameter as the civil case? Would they be given some relief uh, through the, the archdiocese, whether it was monetary or otherwise? So I'm trying to unpack your question and trying to understand it. So with respect to any criminal case that we handle, there would be typically a victim, right? So in this particular case, the one that we're talking about today, um, we had three victims, victim one, victim two, and victim three. And um, we investigated um, how the archdiocese handled um, and how these three victims were actually abused by former priest Curtis Waymire. And so again, Curtis Waymire was convicted uh, in Minnesota and in Wisconsin involving this family, and he is now in prison in Wisconsin. And so this investigation in this particular case is about people other than Curtis Weimar within the archdiocese and what their role was. And we concluded and brought forward criminal charges against the corporation because we believed that it contributed to these three victims being um, sexually abused. And so the dropping of those charges would allow those victims to have any other monetary justice from the archdiocese to have set up a, a fund, of course, uh, as part of this agreement? Well, the, the, bank, the archdiocese has uh, filed for bankruptcy, and so that process has been going on for quite some time. And uh, as a part of the bankruptcy process, they are trying to um, see if they can satisfy the creditors' com, uh, claims. The creditors, for the most part, are the victims of clergy sexual abuse that go <laughs> back decades. And I, I think you could assume also that uh, uh, the, the, our victim one, two, and three are also claimants within that bankruptcy process. So hopefully um, their recovery can be maximized through that process. Uh, but we've also put into place, and it's very important for me, in case that the bankruptcy proceedings fall apart or whatever it might be, uh, that this family uh, will have access to ongoing counseling and therapy, whatever they need from the archdiocese, I will use my bully pulpit uh, to ensure that that happens. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank we you. do have a copy of our press release here.